need to remember that we've been doing research for over 40 years now. We were a research company before we had any commercialized products. So science is in our DNA. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that the scientific and medical community view natural products with some skepticism. This is certainly true where I come from in Canada. Canadian government and the Quebec government went as far to say the following. Want to see the way a natural supplement company should behave. Their statements on scientific validity. The look at Immunitech. I want you to continue uh, uh, ex exploring these uh, Immunical products and exploring glutathione. Please feel free to visit my Facebook page. You see the address up there. New articles on glutathione all of the time. Now, you all know that Immunical raises glutathione, but there seems to be other products out there that claim that they can raise glutathione naturally. Let's take a look at some of the more common ones. Now, two that you will see all the time is cysteine and N-acetylcysteine. These are very, very popular substances. Where do they come from? For many years, cysteine came from one major source. It came from the hair clippings of barber shops in China. Bot of hair that's cut in China, take turn it into cysteine. Also use the cysteine to make N-acetylcysteine, NAC. Some people had a very difficult time with this. Many religions forbid people to eat human tissue. Source of now, the Chinese use duck feathers as their source of cysteine. Of course, the United States doesn't want to be outcompeted by China, so they use their own source. Why let all the chicken feathers go to waste after you harvest your chickens for food? As you can imagine, it's a lot of chemistry to turn duck feathers and chicken feathers into cysteine and N-acetylcysteine. So can we really call these substances natural? And of course, you all see glutathione as a supplement. I'm sure by now you know that eating glutathione really isn't an efficient way to raise glutathione levels in your body. It gets broken down in your digestive tract and never makes it to your cells. There's intravenous glutathione, there's nasal glutathione, there's all kinds of glutathione. The majority of glutathione that you will find in supplements, in intravenous, in drugs, come from bacteria. We grow bacteria and we extract glutathione from the bacteria. Also another source of glutathione, next slide. Some people will use fungus as well as bacteria. It's an efficient source of glutathione, only if you do one thing. Here's an example of a paper, a scientific paper on glutathione production. What they do is they take a specific fungus and they modify the genetics so it makes more glutathione. See, all of these, there's many, many studies, and what they do is they manipulate the genetic makeup of these fungi to produce glutathione. They expose them to chemicals and strong radiation to manipulate, to engineer their DNA. Now, you can do the same thing to bacteria as well. Here they're using a common bacteria called E. coli. This is the bacteria that gives you diarrhea. Next slide. 
this bottom slide over there, this, this is even crazier. They combined the genetic material of two different bacteria, E. coli, which gives you diarrhea, Streptococcus, which gives you sore throat, and they fused them to make a monster new bacteria that makes glutathione. So engineering the replicative material of these organisms forward is this natural? Even if we say that it's natural, next slide, this is 100% genetically modified organisms. So let's go on. Next slide. Really, whether you have a problem with genetically modified organisms, you care it comes from chemically treated feathers from birds, doesn't matter. Does what matters? is human studies. Does it work in human beings? Um, this is an example of a table that I have in my new book. And you'll see on the left side, all different kinds of ways of raising glutathione. And in the green column are the ones that have been definitely proved to work in humans. Undenatured whey protein isolate, in other words, immunocal, and the drug N acetylcysteine, which I say isn't really natural. You'll see all the rest of those really have very weak or even no clinical evidence that it works in humans. Now let's look at what real proof is. Now you've seen this slide before slide that shows Immunical has shown up in 63 published medical articles. Is that number 63 a real number prize? No. At the end of 2020, we will have over 70 articles. Thing you can be extremely proud about. No other company has that kind of research. And again, if you really want to find out more about glutathione and get into much higher details, uh, you'll see the latest book on glutathione in Spanish. Or if you just want to go online, visit my Facebook page, and we will all continue to learn every month.